Good morning, everyone. So now is the time that to gather our hearts and souls for worship and in the quiet of these moments, let us fix our eyes and our hearts on God. And we remember why we're here this morning. We seek the quiet center that brings us to God's mercy seat. We are one mind in worship. Our opening song, Shout to the Lord. rise and join me in the call to worship, which is taken from Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence and sing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are God's people, the sheep of the pasture. Enter God's gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks, thanks to God. God. Bless, Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love and forever. God's faithfulness is from generation to generation. Bless let us God. worship God. You may be seated. And let us continue to worship God this morning 
in songs of praise. Our first selection is Glorious One. The second is Crown Him with Many Crowns. And the third is Revelation Song.
with me to the throne of grace where we will receive help in our time of trouble. Oh, generous God, what a wonder you are. Father, we bless your name because you have called us and you have claimed us and sent us into your world to do your will. God, our judge, our, our redeemer, we give you thanks for this day, for the ways that you have blessed our lives and the abundance you have bestowed upon us and for feasts and gatherings with family and friends, for traveling mercies over this holiday weekend and traveling mercies over the next month and for days off from school and for work for these warm homes that we have, uh, warm smiles and warm hearts. You are Christ, our teacher and our companion. We lift up to you those people and places in our world who are suffering this morning. We lift up to you our world where 87,000 women and girls were killed in one year in violent crimes. 
We lift our hands to you for creation, growing under the weight of a changing climate. And oh God, we lift our hands for prayers this morning for people who are living in places of war and violence, especially the Ukraine and Israel and Gaza and Africa and the Asian Pacific areas. We lift our hands to you this morning for people who are hungry, those who are thirsty, who are homeless, who are in prison or in immigration detention centers. Oh, we lift our hands this morning for all who have spent Thanksgiving not happy but sick and grieving or lonely. And Holy Spirit, our comforter and our provider, invoke us towards your saving purposes in the world. Encourage us to feed and clothe and shelter and welcome people who lack life's basic necessities. Help us to embrace our ones, the ones in our world that we consider untouchable. Help us this morning to lift our voices in the public square for those whose voices are disregarded and silenced. Help us to learn to pursue justice and peace in our personal relationships, in our communities, and the whole of your world. God, we lift up to you all these and the many more Thanksgiving petitions spilling out of our hearts this morning as we pray the prayer that the Father taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray together our prayer for illumination. Born thy people, you have it, everyone. Born thy people to deliver. Born a child and yet a king. Born to reign in us forever. Now thy gracious kingdom bring. By thine own eternal spirit, rule in all our hearts alone. By thy all-sufficient merit, raise us to thy glorious throne. And we can see in our scripture today that uh, scripture for the week, it's on your sheet that's in front of you. And um, ask that you take a look at that. This morning we're going to be talking a little bit about Ezekiel. Um, we've done Psalm 100 for our call to worship, and our sermon is going to fo focus on Matthew 25, verse 31 to 46. The sheep and the goats. This translation is the NIV. So when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels come with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. And all the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. And then the king will say to those on his right, come you who are blessed by my father. Take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. And Jesus says, for I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. And then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in or needing clothes and close you? When did we see you sick in prison and go to visit you? And then the king will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it for me. And then Jesus will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For when I was hungry, you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes and you did not clothe me. And I was sick and in prison and you did not look after me. And they also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick in prison and we did not help you? And he will reply, truly I tell you, 
Whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. And then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. It might seem like a strange parable, but I don't know if you know that this is one of the most famous and favorite parables in all of scripture. You know, today is the last Sunday of the liturgical year, and we celebrate today Christ the King. In a world that's filled with various forms and types of leadership and authority, we look to Jesus as the King, our true King, the King that we follow, the one who reigns with love and compassion and selflessness. And that gospel passage from Matthew 25, which I just read, it presents a powerful image of Jesus as the ultimate king and judge. And Jesus separates the sheep from the goats, not based on their wealth or their status or their achievements, but on their acts of love and mercy. And the king we honor is one who identifies himself with the hungry. Jesus identifies with the thirsty and the stranger and the naked and the sick and the imprisoned. He calls us to recognize his presence in, at le in the least of our brothers and sisters. And you know, God has given us some very, very clear instructions in his word as to how we are to live for him. And these include that commandment to love one another, John 13, 34 to 35. The call to follow him at any cost or denying our own desires, that came from Matthew 16, 24. The exhortation to care for the poor and the needy, James 1, 27. And the warning, that warning not to fall into sinful behavior like those who don't know God. That's 1 Thessalonians 5, 6 to 8. So, so, so Jesus summed up a life lived for God when a teacher of the law asked him the most important of all commandments. We <clears throat> talked about this a couple weeks ago. And Jesus said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. And you must love the Lord our God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. For this is the first and the great commandment, and the second is like unto it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two depend all the law and the prophets. There is no commandment greater than these. I love that scripture. I memorized it as a child. There's another prayer in the scripture that I think is, is pretty neat. And it's the prayer that Jesus prayed prior to his crucifixion, which also sheds light on our purpose this morning. Referring to believers, Jesus prayed to God his Father. And he said, Father, I have given them the glory you gave me, that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me. And may they be brought to complete unity to let the Lord, the world know that you sent me and that I have loved them even as you have loved me. And Father, I want those you've given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory that glory that you have given me because you love me before the creation of the world. And O oh, righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you, and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them, and I will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them, and that I myself may be in them. Isn't that beautiful? It's John 17. Verse 22 to 26. Does anyone have an idea what the glory is that he's talking about, that John's referring to? Anyone know? That glory is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit who ties it all together, who holds it all together for all of us. You see, Jesus' desire is a relationship with each of us. And a life that is lived uh, for God, it glorifies God. We pursue God when we're filled with the Holy Spirit. We pursue God with our entire being, our heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. And when we're filled with the Spirit, we abide in Christ. And therefore, we act like him by loving others. John 15, 4, 8. And in doing that, then we bring glory to his name and we enjoy the relationship for which we were originally 
created. It's all about that relationship. You see, those who live for God must seek him in his word. And in order to live for God, we must seek the guidance of the Holy Spirit to apply that word to our lives. Because living for God means giving ourselves up and desiring God above no, no one else. And as we draw nearer to God and we come to know him more, then his desires will naturally flow from us. His desires will become ours. And as you and I mature, our, our desires to obey God's commands, they increase as our love for God increases. Remember, Jesus said in John 14, 15, if you love me, you obey what I command. And this morning in Ezekiel's scripture, that prophecy, I hope you had a chance to, uh, to read it, that prophecy paints a picture of God as the good shepherd, the good shepherd that cares for God's flock. It's kind of a funny scripture. You might enjoy reading it, particularly when God talks about the fat shepherds and the skinny sheep, that God does not approve of that type of leadership. So God seeks out the lost and binds up the injured and strengthens the weak. Our shepherd king knows each one of us by name and desires that none of us should be lost. So I want you to reflect on these readings this week. Now what you're seeing in front of you are the re readings for next Sunday's service, December the 3rd. And that'll be the first week of Advent. And as we reflect on these readings, the ones from this week and the ones from next week, we're challenged to do one thing. We're challenged to examine our lives. And when we do that, I want you to ask yourself the question, do you recognize Christ the King and do you allow him to reign in your hearts? God raised Jesus from the dead and placed him over all things, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but in the one to come. And God put all things under his feet and he gave him the head over all things to the church, which is his body. That's us. The fullness of him and fills all in so do we follow his example? Do we allow ourselves to be filled to overflow with the Holy Spirit? Do we enter into humble service and selflessness in our leadership roles, in our jobs, in our communities, in our friendships, whether in our families or workplaces, in a world that values wealth and power and success? Jesus' kingship stands in stark contrast because he reigns not by force, but by pure love. So he leads us not with arrogance, but with humility. And he serves not for personal gain, but for the well-being of us, for the well-being of others. And this is the kind of leadership that our world desperately needs, amen? So this morning on this Christ the King Sunday, as we honor Christ our King, <clears throat> Let us surrender our lives to his loving rule. Let us allow him to be the king of our hearts. Let us allow Jesus to guide us in acts of kindness and compassion and love. And let us continue to be the community, the, communi commu the, the community that continues to serve the way we serve, that serves the least among us, that recognizes the presence of the king in their faces. This is, this morning, indeed, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks. This morning I say thanks be to God. Amen. So we have a beautiful song as a sending song. Amazing love, you are my king. And then I want you to rise when it's over so that we might do our charge in benediction. I want to apologize to you that the charge is very, very long but I'm asking that you read it very slowly, methodically, that we might keep it in our minds, and then I'll be glad to give the benediction if there's nothing else.
song to close our worship service this morning. Uh, before we go, I just want to mention that the flowers on the altar were a gift from Patty and um, Kelvin in honor of Patty's father. Please rise. If you will do the charge, I'll gladly give the benediction. Friends, Friends go forth from this place, place and seek, seek the face of Christ. Christ. Seek Christ's face in every person, person we meet, the, the least, least, the greatest, the remarkable, the ordinary, the sacred, the profane. Seek, seek Christ's face outside yourselves, outside these walls, outside your daily routines. Seek Christ's face in people who are vulnerable, trusting that when they look into our eyes, they too will see Christ's face looking back. Amen. And as you go, may the grace of Christ enfold your heart, may the love of God sustain your soul, and may the holy mischief of the Spirit, may it disrupt your life and bring you home to Christ's sovereign, joyful kingdom. Hallelujah. Amen. Have a wonderful week. You guys be safe.